Hi, it's Wednesday, and let's get started. First of all, last week was the talk about a Ouija board, so I have uh, four follow-up questions on that. The first one is uh, actually a couple people, a Cindy, a Jim, a Lindsay. How do you get rid of an attachment from a Ouija board? The only thing that I would seriously suggest is if you think you've had something, you know, for a long time from a Ouija board, or even if it hasn't been that long, smudge, smudge, smudge. Normally I tell people every two weeks, but if you think it's something from a Ouija board, you've got to do it more often than that. You have to remember, smudging will make whoever is attached to you lethargic, laid back. You will see a huge difference. And if you do it enough, they'll get disgusted and leave. Second one from Beth. I thought Procter & Gamble made and owned the Ouija boards. I believe they were one of the companies that also did, but there were a lot of companies that made them. And that, I remember that everybody said, well, Procter & Gamble sells soap. Why would they make something like that? Why not? Third one, I really, really want to use a Ouija board, and I am an adult. Um, how do I protect myself? And this is from Yvonne. I can't even imagine why somebody would really, really want to use a Ouija board, but if you do, um, I guess I would smudge before you started using it. Of course, that would probably, in all honesty, block somebody from coming in, which in my world would be a good thing. But if you're just hell-bent on doing it, then I suggest that you smudge, have the smudge stick right there, and smudge after you are done using the Ouija board. Um, if you're doing this for yourself, by yourself, that would probably work just fine. But what are you going to do if you're doing this with other people in the room? See, that that's what I would question. But everybody does what they want to do. The last question is, if you don't ask personal questions, just fun questions, will we be in trouble? I don't know what fun questions are. Mm. Again, I would just say please do not use a Ouija board. I don't think it's like somebody uh, saying that they do gray, they don't do black, they don't do white, they're sort of in the middle. That's almost like being a little pregnant, not so. You're either pregnant or you're not. So I, I don't know. I don't see what kind of fun questions you could ask a Ouija board. Okay, this one is from Jeannie. Um, for the last year or so when I'm drifting off to sleep I will suddenly in my mind's eye see a person that will start me and wake me up. This person will be just standing there and I will see their whole body or it will be a close-up of their face. No expression, maybe smiling, maybe talking, but I cannot hear or understand what they're saying. They are always in black and white like a black and white movie. Their faces are clear. It happened to me last night and it was an attractive woman in a dress and I could see a pretty brooch on her dress. None of these people ever look familiar to me. I only see these people for a second or two then I fully wake up and realize I was just drifting off to sleep. But it is annoying. I'm not particularly frightened by any of these episodes, but I just wonder what the heck it is. I always dream in color, and these people that show up are in black and white. Have you ever heard of this happening to anyone else, and do you know what is happening to me? Jeannie, this happens to a lot of people, believe it or not. Most people see what you see, and you sort of hinted at it. Right before you fall asleep at night, you know how you flip your pillow over to get the cold side and all of a sudden you sort of open your eyes and you see somebody standing there and then you blink a couple times and they're gone. Or in the morning, 
the alarm clock goes off, you reach over and you hit it for 10 more minutes for the snooze button, and when you did that, you spotted somebody in the room. That is not necessarily anybody that's bad. Without a phone call from your house, I cannot tell if this is an earthbound spirit or somebody that has crossed over and is just visiting. It doesn't seem like you're afraid. Uh, you don't like it happening, but you're not afraid of it. And as long as you don't have any ill effects from it, like they're keeping you up at night, or you end up in the morning after you've had one of these visions with a headache or an upset stomach, you know, it could be just a neighbor, a ghost from the neighborhood that's just coming through, buzzing through, and, you know, watching and seeing what's going on. I have to admit, I don't like when they do this in the bedrooms. But that's where you're usually drifting off to sleep or waking up in the morning. Sometimes if you snooze on the couch, that will happen there too. I would try to keep track of it on a calendar on how often it's, it is. Um, you might see that it happens the week working up to a full moon more than any other time of the month or around the new moon. If that's the case, if you can pinpoint when it's happening, why don't you why don't you smudge during that time, and maybe that'll stop them from coming in. Uh, okay, that takes care of Jeannie. This one is from Debbie, and Debbie is in Ohio also. I'm so glad you started to do YouTube. Uh, it really addresses a lot of my questions. But I'd really like to know this. And I just started catching up on some of them, so maybe you've answered this before, and I'm sorry, but I really need to know. If a person commits suicide because, suicide because they are in despair, feeling hopeless, tortured, and all around miserable, and figure they have no other way out, do these hopeless feelings stay with them after they're dead? While they're earthbound to a point, they do. Once they go into the light, though, they everything is cured. It's like people that have illnesses or sick. You, you go back to normal. Um, and do she wants to know if I see many suicides. Lately, I do, uh, especially in the last seven or eight years, and unfortunately, it's been really younger people, and I talked about this in one of the other YouTubes. I, it, it's just amazing to me because these, these young people are really not sorry that they killed themselves. Um, and yes, they can go to the light, absolutely. And sometimes they can see people in the light that they know that will talk them into crossing over. So no, they don't wander around in that state. You know, there are definitely, you know, ways for them to cross over. Suicide is such a touchy subject and generates so much emotions for anyone who is faced with it in their lives or those of their loved ones. And that's a good point because sometimes that's one of the reasons why they don't cross over is because they see how tore up their relatives are. And so they think, well, why did I do that to mom or dad? Maybe I better stay. This one is from uh, Ashley in Nevada. My co-worker and I listen to your YouTube videos while we are working in our office. I recently got a Quincy charm and beaded a necklace to go with it. I am Native American and we have a protection seed as well. It has a few names, cedar, juniper, um, and or ghost bead. It is called other names as well. Ann and I have a few questions for you, so here we go. One. When did you discover you could create the white light? How do you do it? Can, any, can anyone do this or learn it? I, my grandmother taught me how to do it when I was seven. And I believe anybody can do it. It's just a matter of practice, practice, practice. Uh, she asks about suicides. The second questions are all suicides earthbound or can someone cross them over if they choose? 
correct? I just answer that, yes. Uh, third one, I've been hearing the door move in my hallway. How can I tell if it's a ghost? The only way that I can tell if it's a ghost is for a phone call from your area or from the house where you think or wherever the problem is. And or the other thing that you could do is try smudging every two weeks and if it stops then you know an earthbound spirit was doing it and it's gone now. Uh, several deaths, suicides, accidents have occurred in our small town. Are they related in some way? I don't know. I think sometimes things come in waves. I know this time of the year around the holidays, everybody says that suicides happen more often because people are more depressed during holidays. So there may be something to it. Um, and what are some ways a person can tell if earthbound spirit is in your house? Well, you've got one really good hint going right there with the closet door opening and closing, things moving, not feeling good, tired all the time. If you and your, your Anne get uh, a good library and get When Go Speak, that will answer like 10,000 of your questions. That, that is, it, that's a great book to get answers. Um, oh, this one's a really long one, so we'll do this one next week. And this one here is a little shorter. And this one's sort of cute. This is from uh, Jackie in Iowa. I enjoy your video videos each week. I learn so much. I'm so glad you surgery went well, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to send a quick letter to tell you about our experience using a Quincy during medical procedures. I had listened to your sessions about taping a Quincy to your body during a surgery, and so I ordered one. In September, my husband had a complete right shoulder replacement. Prior to this one, he had done a hip and a left shoulder replacement in the last two years. Those two surgeries were done by the same doctor at the same hospital. He had so many problems in the hospital with both of these procedures for the surgeries. For this surgery, I taped a Quincy to his big toe. Amazing results. No problems during surgery or the recovery. Everything went so smoothly. Recovery at home has gone very well. I now wear a charm on a necklace, never take it off. All of our doctor appointments go so much better. I'm so happy to hear that, that it went well for him. A um, couple of things. I will be at the Goddess Elite on Saturday, November 30th. That's the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I'll have the books there, the charms there. If you're in the area, come on in and say hi. It's not a talk, but I talk to you. You come up and ask me all kinds of questions that you want. It, it's fun. Somebody, uh, people keep wanting to know where to send questions to. Uh, Marianne Winkowski, P.O. Box 31034, Independence, Ohio, 44131. And the last is, Ted doesn't know this yet, but he got a letter that somebody wants him to answer on YouTube. It's from a lady in Maryland. And so, guess what, hon? You're going to be answering a question next week. So, we'll see how he does. Have a great week, and we will talk next week Wednesday. Thank you.